Yes, yes, yes. And Fort, do you go by Fort with everybody? Yes. Or just yes. Well, just for the kids. For the kids. Are you a you a military man? Oh. Oh. Oh no, that's good. <laughs> that's the theme music. Yeah. Go ahead and let that thing rock then. Yeah. So we're gonna get Alicia gave us a countdown to get started. Perfect. Okay, so I'm about to do the intro. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're listening to KGPC 96.9 FM, Oakland, and streaming online at www.kgpc969.org. This is the Anything Can Happen show with Kenya Asa, Quezzy Dreams, and your man, Cat Fitness. And we have another amazing episode for y'all today. We have one of the, one of the creators, founders, co-founders... Ah. Can you give a proper introduction over there, Brother Quasi? Absolutely. Absolutely. So in us, or in the studio with the wonderful ACH Anything Can Happen crew, we have the one and only, the esteemed Mr. Douglas Fort. So hey! hey. hey. Whoa, 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 <laughs> so whoa, whoa. if you haven't heard this name before, you probably heard of the Blurred Academy, or you definitely will, so stay tuned. But quick bio, Douglas Fort is an American entrepreneur, co-founder of the Blurred Academy. Blurred stands for Black. Nerds, please don't look that up on Webster's because we are innovating it. But Blurred Academy currently serves as the CEO of Blurtify, a matchmaking service for Black American nerds. Wow, multiple business owners. And Mr. Ford is a hometown hero. He was born in East Palo Alto, California. His parents are Black Americans from South Central LA. He grew up in the University Village area of Whoa. East Palo Alto. Shout out, shout out. He also graduated from Jackson State University and attended the Silicon Valley Law School. He is a father of four and a servant of God. Give it up for our wonderful guest, Douglas Fort. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got somebody in the building that's thank doing you, big things, y'all. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, fellas, for having me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, thank, you really thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. So I was about to say, I know looking into your bio, yes. it said Black Nerd, mm. right? That's yeah. what Blurred, Talk to yeah, yeah. blurred yeah. stand for. Right. So like how did you come up with that? Like what was the what well, is the idea behind that whole title for well, your your academy? Well the black well blur blurge is not a new name. It's been around for years. But uh, you know, the way it was the, the, the organization or the academy started through literally a, a, an argument with my the co founder, Troy Brown. Okay. It wasn't an argument. We was uh, having a conversation about my oldest son and you know kind of frustrated around some of his opportunities that he didn't take advantage of. Uh, so your oldest son didn't take advantage of? Yeah, yeah which is yeah, okay. Through the black college opportunity. My son okay. had a full ride to Morehouse College. Ooh. Jackson State, House. Jackson State University. Wow. My alma mater and Grandma State University. And so, you know, we put, you know, as his, his uncle and as a father, we were just frustrated. And he was like, you know, it, it, because it was sports related. Yeah. You know, what sport did he play? He played football. Oh, okay. Mm. What he's position? Out, he's a strong safety. Strong safety. So he likes like to come hit. And and yeah. Yeah. That's just another so linebacker right here. Ronnie well, Lott Lurkin. Yeah, so I'm a nerd, so I don't really get into that. So yeah, yeah. That's what our relationship probably, you know. But, um, and so he was frustrated, and then he realized that, you know, he lives in Mount View in East Palo Alto, uh, yeah. my, my friend Troy. And he was watching all these tech people get all this money in real estate, right? And they're not even thinking about football or any sport. Right. So he called me one day, he said, imagine if the black boy didn't play the traditional sports for 10 years and just mm -hmm. focused on STEM. Mm -hmm. the, world Revolution. Will, the world will shift. Yeah. And then that's where I got my motivation from that. And wow. say, you know what? And then he and I are nerds. You know, we grew up in a community where if you weren't Tupac or mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg or Biggie Smalls at the time, you really get no play from the girls. Oh, right? yeah. Wow. So they wanted the third at that time. Yeah, right? exactly. And so in the early 90s. And so we we had a community and we always thought about what if we that what if our nerd was pushed and cultivated, mm -hmm. highlighted, and resource and put resources around that nerd where 
where we would have been, even though we are entrepreneurs, we're all good businessmen, but we could have even been further. Right. Ahead. But it's crazy right. how in our community that's like frowned upon. You know what I'm saying? Like you smart, like you right. damn talk. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So we talk like white like, boy. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah. But, that know, is crazy. Uh, the thing about that was in the black community, we highlight because if you look at our tagline, it says the Florida Academy highlighting the merits in the black community because we highlight the misbehave. Yeah. The entertainer and the athlete. Yeah, they get all the props. But us nerds, they push us to the side. Right. And so what I wanted to do, what we want to do is create an academy where we still got flavor. Mm. We, you know, we we're looking at leveraging your nerd. And this is where we went into the wealth side of things. So we're gonna create this academy and we're gonna talk about paper. Yeah. We're gonna talk about money. We're gonna talk about a way that you can leverage your nerd. That's one of our tags. Mm. So you can go to school for free. Wow. And so Troy being an alumni of Howard University, and I'm being an alumni of Jackson State University, and we're very big on you know using our university systems for black Americans. Mm. Uh, and so we have 107 of those institutions. So why are we always trying to go to another institution uh, for validation when we got 107 over here that already is designed, the DNA of the schools are designed for you. Outstanding. So we created this thing where we go after people like me and him. And we've been, you know, we'll be going on year six. I think we have five point five million dollars worth of scholarships. Wow! Over sixty mm. black kids, historical black colleges. We got a kid that got a full ride to medical school. We got a kid that got a full ride to law school. We got a kid that got a full ride to uh, MBA programs through the UC through our partnerships. Outstanding. So we are uh, kicking, you know, kicking butt. Y'all are making moves. So, yeah. So growing up in that in that blurred world, right? Right. What kind of things did you like when you seen everybody gravitating towards the athletes, towards the rappers and stuff like that? Like, what was your foundation? What was the things that you were doing? Like, were you studying, reading books and saying, OK, I know I'm going to be in this business world, in this entrepreneurial world? Or what were your thought? What was your thought process back then? See, for me, it was different because I'm from the hood. Mm -hmm. Which hood represent these of California? Oh, yeah. California. Yeah. And so they didn't know what I'm talking about when I said that. But, uh, it's, but I grew up in a university village of that area, and you know, like most black community, it was it was written by crack epidemic, and you know, it was, it was all bad. Yeah. So I got into that lifestyle, and so my nerve was pushed underneath. Right. So I was the right. hustler. I was the athlete. I was all the things that everybody was praising me, yeah. but, but the core of me is a video game. I'm a gamer. I'm yeah. a, wow. I'm a, I love to read books. I love to commentate. And wow. so in that, it was, uh, it allowed me to actually navigate places where I would have never navigated just being one side of something. Mm -hmm. And so- Because you were conscious of what you were doing. Yeah, you know, yeah, you were, yeah, how, yeah. How to navigate the streets, but still be at home and be in the books and yeah, cause, all the other stuff. Because at least was a different bag because we were a very pro black community. Yeah. It was, it was ran and operated by blacks. We right. created our own city. And so you there have you that atmosphere of self determination. Self determination. And so, in that, you can be a gangster, but you still can be a nerd. So, it was like, right. it was like a, a thin line. So, for me, um, that was never a problem because there was also a balance of us in both communities, you know, the nerd and the streets, right? Yeah. And so my navigation is different than most uh, traditional black nerds per se, because I was in a lifestyle uh, that was counter to that, but graduated college, graduated high school and moved on to Jackson State. And you know, the, the world, the, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, and it's a continuing history. I know y'all have did some amazing things right now and in the near future, which we're definitely going to talk about in this episode. But as I listen to you speak, right, for those of us who are, for those of you who are watching on live at ACH.show on Instagram, I have Mr. Douglas Ford to my left, and he looks nothing like a black nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or at least what, what people would think. I'm thinking yeah. like, like, what's his name? Urkel? Steve yeah, Urkel, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He don't look nothing like that. He looks like, like Stefan Stark. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, yeah. You know, Urkel <laughs> had his <laughs> other alter ego, <laughs> Stefan. He was like Dame Dash. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Dame is a nerd, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dame, Dame, Dame oh, a nerd, yeah. too. So, I mean, all of us that I was able to transition to that and play in that world, we 
still had the smarts to transition as the reason why his business was the way it was because you have to have some type of level of intellect and capacity to to transition into a corporate America or a small business or right. whatever. So, so it's, and so in that, uh, you know, it's about flavor. When like, like if you look at the blurs, I just posted a picture the other day with me and the boys. It's like twenty six boys that's in our program, and, mm. we, and we they know and I know that we we talk about getting this money. We talk about looking fly. We talk about getting the finest one, whatever you went to, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's not, it's not like they're not being cultivated and pushed and guided in a certain way. Because right. if our boys are leaving that mechanical engineers, we got potential lawyers and doctors and all that. So there we go. you put yourself in position to get whatever you want in life and leave with no debt. So you can do it just to pick of the litter for you. Yeah. And so, but you got to have this, you got to have this confidence about yourself. And yeah. me, me being a nerd, pouring this information into them boosts their confidence, including what their family is doing, of course, but just they're able to see it uh, on the day to day. Absolutely. It makes them, uh, and it's touchable to them. Absolutely. And so, Absolutely. And so why, why the emphasis on STEM in particular, right? Like why that yeah. career? Well, I mean, if we want to go just from our ancient stuff, but I'm not going to go there, right? Hey, oh, wait, let's man. go. We can go. Come on. Anything I mean, can is, happen, sure. you know, this, <laughs> we can go. This there. is what we do. This is what we do. It's in our DNA. But from an economic standpoint, you can literally be one and done, meaning one degree, and be done for a computer science and mechanical engineering and starting off at 60, 70, 80,000 mm. and, and, and progress yourself all the way through. It is the best way for economics. The other communities push their peer kids in that if they like it or not. And so for me, we're once again it's a wealth building program. So I'm gonna give you an example. Break it down to it. Mm -hmm. And so if I got a blur and he got a certain GPA, and then our partnership, for an example, and our partnership at Prairie View and it's in Prairie View, Texas. Mm -hmm. It's about 20 minutes east or west of uh Houston, Texas. They have an opportunity. To get their undergrad in any STEM major, meaning mechanical engineer, civil engineering, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But they also have an opportunity to finish with a master's in engineering. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me a possible black boy can leave Prairie View and m with a master's degree in engineering at 23 years old. Wow. With no debt. Yeah. No debt. Whole That's life ahead. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not at all. We don't provide that. That right there, opportunity is life changing for him. Yeah. It puts him in a position within two years to buy his first home. So at twenty five, we got a home loan. Yeah. Maybe at twenty seven, buy another home. Maybe at twenty nine, you have his wife, children. He can start something, but he has his establishment. He has, he has a looked at him. He has looked. He, the woman has looked at him as an honor and as a provider. Uh oh. So he won't be looked upon in any way. He's put in a position where now he can start his small businesses because he's not in debt. The sky is the limit for him if you take a lot of advantage of these of, of these opportunities. So Absolutely. yeah, excuse me. So yeah, we're gonna teach you about wealth because I'd rather have your boy retired at 40 than not retired because you got all this debt from Stanford or UC Berkeley. Or whatever the situation of it is, so absolutely, that is uh, that is what you know. That's what we're leveraging here. We're leveraging our black colleges for our babies to leave with little to no debt, and so they can start their career in an economic situation. Absolutely, on a different level. Absolutely, and we we have a quick shout out from Mrs. D, who was actually one of our esteemed guests just a couple of weeks ago, talking about ADHD amongst the black youth yeah. and being misdiagnosed. You know, very very similar to the topic we're discussing today, but. We have a shout out from Miss D on Instagram. She said, shout out to my swack brother, S-W-A-C. I'm not sure what that means, but T S U is still the best. Hold on, hold on. She, hold on. Let me uh, it up. She gonna she give me some shade. Yeah, it's called the Swack Athletic Conference. Swack Athletic what what that? Yeah. Southern uh, Southern it's S stands for Southern Western Southwestern Athletic Conference. Swack. So we so are like part of the same. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're part of the same kind of like the pack. Yeah. yeah. So we always going at each other. She's part of Texas Southern. Yeah. Spray hand went. I went to Jackson State, where Dion's the head coach right now. Dion Sanders. Yeah. He's the head coach. Oh, right now. Yeah, huh? Dion Sanders. Uh, Hugh Jackson just became the head coach at Grambling State University. Oh man. And that's all in the swag. 
And so, uh, and to be honest with us, back to the STEM, mm -hmm. uh, the top seven, top five STEM schools is in SWAC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Jackson State, Alabama a and FAMU, uh, Prairie View. These are all SWAC schools that produce accredited engineering programs. There we go. Uh, so. Yeah, we there got, we go. Yeah, she know I'm gonna get on her about that. Black power, <laughs> black power. Yeah, shoot, baby. Yeah. So, how many generations of kids have you guys mentored so far since Ooh, you started the program? Yeah, that's good one. So, I got to give a shout out to our. Well, I call him our number one Blair. His name is PJ. Shout out to PJ. PJ is our first Blair. And so he was one of the first students that joined the program yeah, and kind of yeah, went through yeah. the whole process. He went through the whole process, and now that's the one that got a full ride to medical school at UC Irvine. Mm. So now you guys got to understand this. Black kids or black parents, what happens when you have those high achieving kids, they're going to be in classrooms and rooms where they put, you know, the, the NYUs and the Columbias and all those are on the table. Right. And that's fair. They're supposed to have all these options. So for an example, the PJs and the rest of the Blairs, have so many options, they're pulled into the PWI arena. And so what PJ did, being smart and knowing he got a presidential scholarship right. from Jackson State University, alma mater, and he said, I'm gonna take the economic right route. There we go. I can get into Berkeley, and I think he did. I can get into all these schools, but I pay no dollars. No dollars. Mm -hmm. And they give me a book stipend. Oh my goodness! To go to Jack State University because he thought long term, I might have to pay for medical school. Right. So why would I pay for my undergrad debt when I got this other side of the game that mm -hmm. I got to cover? And so he took he bet it on himself, and he left undergrad with look with no debt at all. Wow! Wow! And his grades were so well. He applied to UC Irvine and they gave him a full ride. Wow, that's not an easy school to get into. <laughs> but we got nerds on me. We yeah. right. I put, we got hey, nerds on me. I put anything on my babies right, right there. Wow, put, you can put them against anybody in the world. I got the we got the best babies. We got Don King over here for the Blurred Academy. Yeah, man, that's how it's supposed to be. You want to step in the room with my babies? You better come with it. You know what I mean? So that's fantastic. It's just the point where now he didn't do it for image. He did it for the for the bag, he understand yeah. long term economically. If he leaves as a neurosurgeon with no debt, what can he impact the black community? Mm -hmm. Let alone just his own community, his own his own wife, yeah. his own children. What he can do, and then having the same type of ideology. Let me help a young cat move through this. That was going to bring me to my next question. So, mm -hmm. he started at what age? Eighteen. Eighteen, and now he's twenty three. Twenty three. So is now handing over like the responsibility of what he learned at 18 now yes. taking that next generation so he's of 18 created, year olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So PJ created a, a program or not a program per se of how to get in the law, how to get in the medical school. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the sure. blueprint. He got the blueprint. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So Shout you, out to Jay-Z. No, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's we don't, it's actually PG, PJ, though. But, yeah, PJ, PJ. Yeah, PJ. Out, but, it, but he's created that. So he he can go. He goes around and try to help black kids know what he Under makes. the same umbrella, though? Under what y'all created? No, that's he do his own thing. He's he's okay. Oh, wow. PJ, every kid that we got going on is it's an extension. You built your own company. You yeah. built your own thing. You be your own entrepreneur. You do what you need to do. If you need any questions for Fort, I got you. It's just this. continue to mentor this, him this, through the process. Exactly. So we were trying to create this understanding. So he created this. And what he does, when some kids want to do it, uh, he's willing to help. Now, he know I have a caveat. Mm -hmm. There's, but that's, uh, PJ is different than me. So I can't put my caveat on him. I could, mm -hmm. This program is only for black American kids. Uh -huh. Right. And so. I'm not against the, uh, my Asian people or anything like that. It's just the point where our resources are so sp spread out that once we concentrate on our own resources, we become uh, an amazing people. And stop moving yeah. forward. And so, I, uh, you know, uh, if I can get more doctors, we got more doctors. Trinity's coming behind him. Michaela's coming behind him. That's his girlfriend. She graduated from Howard University with a 4.0. Uh, imagine that, y'all. Yeah. Two doctors. Yeah. Come on. Psh. 
Power with the mind. Power with the mind. With the mind. Two. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to McKenna. And uh, Trinity's behind him. We got Michael uh, Lewis that's coming behind her. That's at how, uh, Morehouse College right now. We got a lot of doctors lined up. And, um, you know, that we we got two kids that got full rides to law schools. It, it's on. It's popping. Yeah. yeah. It's just getting started. So when y'all created this program, what was the criteria to be able to, to go into y'all program for mentoring? First off, we had to, you have to be of the mind of wealth. Okay. Ooh. Because what happens is, we, so no knuckleheads coming into. The well, program. they have to be Man, more than that. Yeah, the mind of wealth is because what happens is is that, and that's unfortunate. It's happened to us is that we still look for a white validation. Uh-oh. And so Talk what happens it. is, I would get a kid that would have all the resources available to him, but they're turning down to go pay at a UC because they want the white validation. Oh my goodness! So it ain't for them. Yeah, because they don't have a mindset. And they don't even know it. They're just not aware of it. It's right. like, I got into UC Berkeley, I'm going to go because it's worth whatever. Right. And so we have to be of the mind first. Secondly, you have to have the scores. Because what has happened is the SAT the, the, scores, the SAT scores and the yeah. ACT scores. ACT. And that's another thing, too. Let me just do a shout out real quick, y'all. If you're out there, and I know in California, they say the SAT and the ACT stuff is not required to get in. That's very true. That's from an admission standpoint. Mm. But you need to start asking questions. Where's the bread? Where's the bread? Mm. And they're going to say to you, you bread. need to have your SAT and ACT. And since you didn't take it, you missed out on your bread. Yeah. Oh, man. So in Not that, black bread. kids, black mamas and daddies, make sure you make your babies take this SAT and ACT because it's associated with your name. Oh, you heard it here first on anything happening. happen. And it's show. funny because when I was going through the recruitment process, they just told me he's like focus on the ACT. Get it? I forget what the score was right, at right. the time, mm-hmm. but um, I was getting looked at like at Bethune Cookman and yeah. colleges like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, as soon as they saw my scores come back, I went the af- athletic road. But as once they saw mm-hmm. the the scores and everything back, they were like, "Oh yeah, you qualify, and we can pay for this." Like you said, they was throwing the money at you. And I think so so many of us. Uh, fail to realize that there is money to pay for our way through college, whether we have it or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but we haven't leveraged our nerd. And I want to say, yeah. mm. at the high school level, especially in California, they're not, the, the counselor's not even aware of the HBC in general. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of got to reach out and, and, and use a word of mouth. And that's what I love about the Blurred Academy. These young people promote the Blurred Academy. They send kids over. So the marketing, I mean, we don't have to do marketing anymore. It's just, and they say you better bring it because Fort Fort ain't gonna have it no because we want to be able because yeah. in our in our partnerships with the HBCUs they say hey look we'll give you a bag of money but give us this type of kid yeah. mm-hmm. and so we got we got to have we got to have those type of kids so absolutely absolutely yeah. I, I got a question for you Fort so I yeah. let, let's take this conversation to the next level I'm yeah. sure you and most of our listeners hopefully have heard of a gentleman named W. B. Du Bois of course that. absolutely absolutely so my question is you know one of his most popular theories, right, was the talent of the 10th, right? And just the idea of taking essentially the top 10% of our population being African Americans and leveraging their skills and leveraging their knowledge in order to push the whole community forward. And then you have somebody like Booker T. Washington who said there's way more of us who don't have those skill sets. Let's focus on being like handymen and carpenters, things of that nature, right? So my question to you for it, have you received any criticism about the program? Right about who you're choosing to focus on, what the intentions are. Even when you talk about wealth building and all the the flack that we can get because of that, like, have you experienced any of that criticism or setbacks? We black people, you know, some criticism yeah. Yeah, when, yeah. I, when, I, when I when I community. <laughs> Come on now. He said, he said, uh, however, yeah. there's a language there that I use though. If you're a blurred, and if you if if you're a kid. Is not getting a ton of money. I recommend the trades. Mm-hmm. So when I'm talking to the players, they get the whole game. Mm-hmm. So if you look, go to this local junior college, a lady that has electrician technician, so you can get into the trades and make good money overnight. Mm-hmm. So I'm a I'm a cross between both. You don't go to school unless you get you some money, yeah. and if you can't get the money, let's get into this trade and get some real money. Right. So in that. It's it's talked upon around that. I think 
this is actually this is a solution to all our problems, in my opinion. The black boy is not reading at eighth grade, twelfth or twelfth grade. Eighty percent of our black boys are not reading at twelfth grade. Ooh, that's too many. Eighty percent of our black boys are not reading at twelfth grade. No. Right. So that means we have a problem, a pandemic in the, in the black community. Yeah. So a solution to that is if I was an administrator, if I was someone or a parent, I would gear my kid toward the trade because mm-hmm. we can at least get our boys up to trade level math yeah. and trade level uh, reading. Yeah. So they can make it self, so they can be self-efficient. Yeah. And so in that, there are solutions to that. But what we try to do is put that that type of kid in the blur category and it doesn't right. work. It doesn't and, then, work. And, and then here's the debt. Here's the situation doesn't fail. You know what I mean? He can get him into school. So what, what we do from a solution standpoint, if there's a certain thing, if there's no money, I'm not going to suggest it to you. Right. What I'm going to say to you is that go to the local JUCO or what I've said, there's an HBCUs that's, 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 that have dorm rooms, that have these trainings. You need to go there, get out your mama house, and get this training and start working ASAP. Get out your mama house. <laughs> Don't get out your mama house. So in that, I understand those two ideologies, and it's a it's room for both. Absolutely. But you got you got to just be fair and put the game into the young man and make sure that he lands well. Instead of saying, okay, I got a two point seven, I can get into these black schools. Yeah. Right. But I'm I'm seventy thousand in the hole. But right. I'd rather you go. On the top. I'd rather you go to Laney, CSM, or whatever like that and get your electrician, carpenter, and start off at $27 an hour and just progress yourself through. And within four years, you're forming, making $60,000, and making $60 an hour. Right. So I'd rather you go that route instead of debt. Because either way, you're going, either way, route, right? You're going to make yeah. money and leave with no debt. Right. Right. And so, and be a more asset to your community. Correct. Um, yeah, because once you're, one, one you're a foreman, you can bring other brothers through the program. One can't go without well. the other. You can't right. do the telling the tip without Overseas kids, you can't, you can't build the infrastructure. So we all matter. We all you got to have somebody to build a building, and somebody to work in the building. Right. So right. Somebody to create the scheme to, to build a building up. Mm-hmm. Right. We all work together. Nobody is more or less than anybody else. But I love what you're saying for it. Like I really do. And being somebody who I identified as a black nerd, right? <laughs> right. And then I shared that identity because I was ashamed. <laughs> well, that, but it wasn't popular at the time. Like right. it wasn't. It wasn't cool. You know, I mean, I, just, it was, is it now? I, I haven't been in the schools. In oh, this is it's, it's, it's on. It's on. Yeah. I mean, they, the boys should. they're changing it. Like yeah. my boys, if you look at their Instagram, they dipped in butter. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they lost they, they, Oh my, they dipped in butter. They're black <laughs> nerds, y'all. Oh, oh my they, goodness, they dipped. I said the other day on my page, y'all better get on my boys now because they're gonna be married soon. <laughs> but what's so I interesting? Said I said that because they're gonna get. That it's gonna be hard to not pull an engineer. Yeah. Like, what you gonna do? Yeah. But we're seeing a shift. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because right. the only way out of our community prior to that, like we were saying, was like being that rapper, being that athlete. And now we're seeing other opportunities in the tech world, in YouTube and technology right, right. and social media. And it's like, I don't have to go down this route. Anymore. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so amazing. Uh, I agree. Do you do any partnerships with like Afrotech? And, and no, not companies? yet. Okay. Well, we, let me, let me just say this. I am in full support of Afrotech. I love what they're doing, what's going on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You got beef? No, no. no, no, no beef. I'm just acknowledging that I am. I come from a different culture. Okay. You know, so my first lens is street in my head, right? Mm-hmm. And so second is nerd all the way around. Yeah. So I, I promote uh, what they call uh, warrior men. Mm. Talk to them on uh, alpha males. We, we're gonna be warriors yeah. because we we're under, the war, respect. We're under the system Talk of white supremacy. We're under the yeah. system of white supremacy, and so in that system, I need warriors. Anything so, can happen. So, so, so the Blurred Academy boys know, and the girls know very well as well that Ford don't play no games when it comes. No. And so in that, they're fully aware why we getting this paper. Fully aware. You know, from a life of protection, a life of trying to build family. And here's another thing in conclusion. Not conclusion, but the black community that the black community did well in the two pandemics. Mm. And what was this? In the 1960s. Mm. So if we if we don't come in the mindset of building two parent homes, we're lost under the system of life supremacy. But we first gotta have our men mm-hmm. as warriors. We need we need economics. We need infrastructure we need yeah. to know what to do how to do it so in that 
the woman can come and be in her in her natural state. Right. So in that, right. for him, for me, I'm not anti any of that. I'm just pro black man. Yeah. And pro black family. Yeah. And so sometimes agendas mix because I don't have. I'm not anti any of that. Yeah. I'm just knowing how well we do when we have two parent homes. We just yeah. do very well. Even currently, uh, what is it? Eighty four percent of us. That's uh, no, 91% of us that's not in the middle class. I mean, that's in a uh, black that's married or in the middle class. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the conversation right here. We're going to take a quick commercial break. You are tuned in. You're listening to KGPC 96.9 FM Oakland and streaming online at www.kgpc969.org. This is the Anything Can Happen show with Kenya Asa, Quasi Dreams, and your man, Cat Fitness. Uh, wow. Wow. If y'all if y'all just tuning in, wow. please get your pens yeah. and papers ready because it's so much game being given right now yeah. on this uh particular episode. We got the nerd blurred, the him, blurred. himself. Mr. Blurred. Yeah. Sir, sir. Mr. Douglas in the building yes. giving so much free game away today, y'all. Um so Quezzy. Yeah. You said, and this is a lot of us in our community, you right. say naturally you felt like you were a nerd in the community but oh, then yeah, but you had to step away from right. that, that you identity. know what i'm saying and that identity and put that mask on and say okay yeah. that's not the cool thing yeah i don't get no girls what, <laughs> <laughs> what if you really had much. what if you had mentorship what if you had mentorship like Man. you're seeing right here yeah would you have made a different decision in life yeah, oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I actually graduated valedictorian in my high school. I was telling uh, I was telling Mr. Ford this when we talked on the phone, right? And I was somebody who I got one scholarship offer that I had to apply for, right? And I don't even say the name of the school. It was a pretty good school, but that's the only scholarship offer. I was a black male valedictorian. This is in the, the early, like, 2000s. And I got one scholarship offer, right? And I ended up going to a school that I wanted to go to, which was a UC school, very prestigious. But I left with debt, right? Tens of thousands of dollars in debt, right? And that's an extreme burden. Fortunately, I have an income where I'm able to pay for that, but right. most of the people I help don't, <laughs> right? Right, right, right? And I needed something like that, but I'm so glad that it exists now, right? And one thing I really want to touch on for it is yeah, sure. you mentioned a few moments ago when you were talking about warrior men, we definitely will come back to that because right. I really like that subject. But you also mentioned wealth of the mind. And I want to make sure we don't breeze over this topic, but I would really love for you to expand on that, you know, because I know everybody here has seen the articles about by 2051, black wealth is going to be zero, right? Like the, the average income for a household of black families is 30,000 compared to like 150,000 for our white counterparts, how the black dollar only stays in our community for like 12 hours, just all those hours. Yeah, 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 I was about to say it's less than that. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it's 12, six. Oh, yeah. six. Okay. I know so, there's sisters you're talking about, but yeah. here's the counter step. There we go. Here's the solution to that. Out of all, if you do the comparison, they have family. Yeah. And it's, it's multiple so, so, generations so, in the household so, so, as well. So, so, you have the grandfather, the grandparents, yeah, the you parents. Just, you just the, put the kids. You put, you just, we don't. Sixty-six percent of the households are singles oh, in the black goodness. community. Oh my goodness! This is it. Look, and I'm gonna say this to you. I know people don't like it, but I gotta say it. Mm -hmm. Black America, we're talking to you. We have to get married. Mm. It's mandatory under the oh. system of white supremacy. We, 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 lose we will lose. <laughs> we're gonna lose without getting married, y'all. It's impossible to function under the system of white supremacy. I'm gonna tell you the benefits of marriage, though. Under marriage. The black boy and the black girl read better or higher than our white counterpart. Oh my goodness. But but when we marry, marriage, when we marry, marriage, that's I'm talking, you see what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is yeah. you might not like him. You might not like her. <laughs> <laughs> but we in this we in we under we the, in the system. Yeah. Our got black women together. read three to four times more than our white counterparts. Mm -hmm. When we marry. And so these things, and then in that, with that returns, so in that lower lower pregnancy rates, lower incarceration rates. So what we have, so it, we have to have this conversation about relationships. There's right. no way that we're going to go to. And then on the spiritual level, you have to God design it that way. Yeah. If you go outside of the design, you, you see the results. Right. So in that, these are right. oh, these goodness. are to answer to your, your solution. Is that 
if my say for instance one of my players, I got two players. Let me use an example. Um, they, I can't call their names because they get mad at me because I always trying to make them date. Them they know I was trying to make them get together. Yeah, yeah. Y'all looking it's at each other. Y'all looking right at each other. Y'all looking right at each other. It's a power no, couple. Y'all looking right at each other. So my mechanical engineering major marries Deloitte with no debt. Oh, what energy in that room in that house, oh, my bro? God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Freedom. Then you at an age that you can have, you can go back to the old school and have four five youngsters because mm -hmm. you, you got the bread. Up. Yeah. Then you turn the five. House. Then you turn five monsters, warriors, warrior yeah. men and women. Let's go. I'm just saying. So for me, the solution See, to all those simple things you talked about, yeah, you have to get married. Yeah. yeah. And it, I, I it really is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. marriage is the numbers show that we do what we. For us to make through slavery through the sixties, mm. marriage, we did well together. Yeah. Until we get back to that, we're gonna be in the chambers. And let, let's talk about that because it's very apparent. You know, I, I don't want to get this isn't anything in Habitat. I don't want to get too political. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I, I got I got a little understanding of it. It's, it's all right, cat. It's cool. Hey, go for it. He said it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we know that there's a very obvious attack happening right now on not just black livelihood, right, and black happiness, but especially the black family where a lot of these things are born from, right? And you're saying that the ultimate solution, it sounds like the only solution is to get married and to come together. Let me ask you this for it, especially because you work with the youth. That's a, I put a period on that. Yeah, a period on that, right? So working with the youth, what have you seen as issues specifically that are happening that are keeping us from wanting to invest into marriage as other communities do? Social media. Mm -hmm. What they have said, uh -oh. what is cool, and we don't have any dating strategies. Oh man, they don't. We don't know how to date. We don't know how to choose a mate. So we look at image and try to find a cutie fly instead of finding. I need some sustainable, right? So look what I tell the black girls. Y'all can take this with y'all. In your junior year, blurs girls, black girls, you need to stick your head into that engineering department. Mm -hmm. The statistics department, the mathematics department, and find you a boot thing. Mm. Get them early. Get them all the stock. I didn't say you <laughs> got to. I didn't, I didn't say you got to make him your hubby, but you better know him. Come on, because he gonna make paper. And what we're trying to do is build you. We need debt to income ratio where you can buy you a crib. We are talking about dental plans. We are talking about private schools. Man. We are talking about all these things. All these things. So you, this is strategic. Now I'm gonna say this too. There's a book called um, forgot the book, but in the book it talks about why wealthy people go to white Ivy League schools, mm. not for the name, right? But find them a man yeah. and a wife because wow. they already got generational wealth, so they yeah. got to keep that wealth going. Yeah, yeah. they're building together. So me, yeah. you had a black school, right? You better find your boot thing while you're right. on campus. Yeah. You're the next leaders. You know what? So that just solutions to that like yeah to yeah question. no you know what's funny about that because oh man i can't think of the, the the dating the card game that that is called but a brother created a card game right and it's different levels of dating right and mm -hmm. asking these certain questions and they had like a little they had like a orientation or like a, a party around this not too long ago out here in the bay area and it was 80 percent women at this event, yep. right? 80% women, 20% men, right? right? right. And it was so funny because the gentleman that was running the program asked the audience, they were like, if you have somebody that can provide for you, do all these things, but can't put it down in the bedroom, oh, do man. you keep them or do you leave them? Oh, man. And do you know a large percentage said we leave them? <laughs> Right, we call that hustling backwards. Hustling backwards, and it Priorities. was so interesting. Yeah, it was so because interesting. What, the priority, the, media, the, media, yeah. saying, no the mindset. Our, that's why I don't like the what the OG be talking in Atlanta. It's the OG, uh, the Kevin you? Seven dude, the Kevin. Kevin yeah. Seven, uh oh, uh oh. They don't like what he uh, says. Uh -huh. Can you listen? Kevin Seven. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Samuels. I'm sorry. Kevin yeah. Seven. Okay. They don't yeah. like him yeah. because he's speaking, and we we're not being taught how to how to date. I just gave I just gave him jewel. Now for the boys, let me speak to the black yeah. boys. Yeah, real quick. To if you own that college campus, black boys, you need to stick your head in the engineering department to find that, that black woman. Yeah. 
because they're ways. trained to think logically. Mm-hmm. I'm giving some jewels, y'all. So, mm-hmm. secondly, you need to either get an athlete, an athlete as a, I prefer a golfer, a mm-hmm. bowler, or whatever. Most athletes are trained to be coachable, mm-hmm. disciplined, and then mm-hmm. and be able to be a teammate. Yeah. So they have all these tools already wow. that's built into them. Wow. So as a black nerd male, you know how to go find him. Make or find her. Yeah. As a black nerd woman, you know how to find him. Wow. So there's no all my blurs know this for yeah. sure. Every one of them. So it's just the point where I'm just giving these jewels over because I do run a program called the Blurtify. One of my companies is called Blurtify. Blurtify. It's, it's a matchmaking company for black Americans, black nerds. Because the black nerd don't say nothing to the other black nerd, and that's why they walk right past each other. Right. Thinking that's about right. Afrotech, I started at Afrotech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because at Afrotech, I'm seeing drop dead gorgeous women walk by. And I'm seeing these dudes yeah. walk right past each other. Right past now, them. I'm from a culture of, you need to go holler at her. You need yeah. to go talk to her, boy. They walk right past each other. Man. My, stomach, card or my stomach was spinning. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because these, this supposed to be the place the where you're supposed to get your woman, man. It's, yeah. it's easy pickings. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so Talk I to created, somebody. I created, well, my daughter actually named the name Blurtify. But just the point around that is that it is a it's, a it's a private site. that is an invite only. But it's the point where I have to start now bringing you guys together because y'all not saying nothing to each other. Mm. Why do you think that is? Because how do you my, walk past somebody that's in the same field and not even take the time out of your day to even the identify. Because the typical, you know, the typical black like nerd are introverts. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why I introduced them to yeah. cut the, the, the their uncomfortableness, their awkwardness, or whatever that's going mm-hmm. on in that. So, in that, my my point I'm trying to say as it relates to relationships and conclusions, is what we need is to a place where uh, there's solutions to what we got going on. We've got to listen to the game. Mm-hmm. And get out our own way and win. Absolutely. Listen to the game, get out our own way and win. Fantastic. And let, let me ask you this, Fort. So I see you got the wonderful wedding ring on your hand. I, I assume that's a wedding band. Yes, sir. And that, you don't look like no nerd, man. You look like Tony Stark. No. Oh, so I had his money. That, Come on. That ain't no the regular ring. World. He got the, I think that's the cost of Jesus. No, nah, this was cheaper than her. Hers is way more expensive. Hers is way more it, it looks nice. You don't even gotta tell people they got like a rusty look to it. But tell us a little bit. So when did you meet your lady? How long y'all been together? What have y'all done to me? I met her in high school. Oh man. Mm. I didn't know it was her though. Mm. But did she know so it was your sister? She knew who I was. Yeah. <laughs> of course she did. She don't look like no nerd. I, if I was if she was in here, she'd be clapping right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um we was on two different paths. Mm. I was more on the street side. She's a Ultra nerd. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna give my props to my baby real quick. Yeah, I got some <laughs> smart kids. Let me, kid, say, let me know. say something to her real quick. So my baby girl graduated from Spelman College in three years. So this is the type. This the type you do. Yeah. Then she went on to go to Howard University and graduated at like 24 years old. Wow. Mm-hmm. As a doctor, and just been grinding every single a strong entrepreneur woman. And so we met being nerds, you know, and me being This is after high school. This is after high school. I okay. met her after high school through her sister. But y'all went to high oh. school together. But she was younger than me. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So I didn't I didn't, she was like I was like a senior, she was like a freshman. Oh, okay. so I wasn't thinking okay. about I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't thinking about her. Yeah. You know I mean, so she was she was there. She was she was there. there. Yeah. But I didn't know I was I was home. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you weren't no black and, nerd. No, no. <laughs> In my heart. Anytime. And yeah. so at that time. And so we was able to meet, and I, you know, I seen her online, and I, you know, I slid in her DM. Wow! And said, Look, there we man, go. I, I, you know, which that dress is fly, mm-hmm. and she was like, okay, well, she was at the time, I think she was dating somebody. Ah, I get that kind of out of the way. But I told her this. I gave her I said, look, check this out. Uh, I don't know what I'm feeling you, but I need dibs if y'all don't make. <laughs> Speaking okay. into existence. Hey, hey really quick, because this is this is so good. I actually saw something like that on Instagram and it started up the hugest debate, right? Like somebody said literally what you just like said. And I'm like, that's I just what's wrong that. with that. So about a year later, I popped in there again, like, yo, you still with the zero? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's like, No, I'm single. I said, Okay, well, give it's me time. the give me the opportunity to win you over. It's yeah. time. And she was like, Go ahead. And so I Moved to where she was at within a year, was married. Wow, and a bunch of babies later, and yeah. a bunch of businesses later. And 
And so, yeah, that's the that's the part the, the nerd might not be able to do to be that aggressive. Wow. You know? And so, yeah, you know, I was able to pull a black nerd woman. Yeah, a powerful one. So, so being out there in the world, how did you just identify and say that's the one? She was fine. What you mean? Yeah, yeah where you man? So okay, that, that, that was the first. Yeah, that was the draw. Yeah, that was the that was the thing. Yeah. She was. But how did you know after that the fineness that's white? That's white people too. Because, because there's a lot of fine so, women out there. Yeah. So you I went out and we did something intentional. We dated two men. Mm-hmm. And I literally told her, look, I'm dating Mary. What do you want to do? And there's the rub. Yeah. The yeah. blurtified group, the blurtified group I created, you're only in here to marry. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay. we eliminate any drama or somebody yeah, trying to some love, whatever. And so I dated the Mary. So when I moved, when we got out there, we did all the books, we did all the counseling, we did all the 101 questions before marriage. We did everything with the intent to marry. And so we was able to get all the things we needed to get out or any concerns that you have. And we didn't have no concerns. So we busted a move. Mm-hmm. And that was that, and that's how it was. So the warrior class of the male, I'm teaching the boys is that if you see her, you have all these, she has all these things on the table. Good. She's already successful. She's doing her thing. She's, she's in your spiritual world. She's doing her thing. Why not? You, you know, it's so funny because it sounds like how other cultures care their kids so right. yeah you know exactly. what i'm saying like you go to the indian culture asian culture and they pair based on that they looking like okay you don't need to necessarily be in love at first yeah but this is a good parent you're gonna yeah. fall in love because you have so many things that, yeah and, you have so and, many things and i think common. i think i think that for us it was i think for her this is a soul this is what i think yeah because she from the hood oh wow but she was in social circles where good dudes are not there. Right, yeah. right, the coaching. And so me coming along was right up her alley, right. culturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was a, a, a part to that. But I was intentional, though. And that's yeah. the thing about it. I was very intentional. I wanted to do what I needed to do. I wanted to marry. I wanted to do my thing, build my family. Yeah. And so that's another thing about the warrior class male. Yeah. Figure out what you're trying to do. And, do and, and before you get into this marriage, let me get this paper yeah so i can make her feel as safe as possible coming into this conversation and so these things that uh, i did in that relationship as well. yeah so and that, that's mm-hmm. powerful like one thing that especially being a millennial one thing that i've noticed is lacking amongst i believe men within uh within my generation is that intention right and is that ability to because i feel like a lot of us as millennials are children of divorce right like my yeah, birth yeah, parents yeah. aren't together, and most of my friends' yeah. birth parents aren't together, right? So, of course, that can be very traumatizing, very damaging. But we, of course, we're not going to fix the problem by doing the same thing. But what yeah. happens in that, you stay stagnated to somebody else's trauma. Mm-hmm. That was between them. Don't stop yours yeah. because you had this. And then, like they say, you know, go to therapy, do whatever you need to do to get as healthy and make it be intentional because at the end of the day, you know, you're getting older and that person's getting older and you want to make these babies and you want to do all these things. We have to get out our own way and produce. That's where I'm at. Like, that's the warrior. Like, I don't feel like doing it. What does a, on a Rootsy say? Um, uh, he says, he says, no, the, the leader, he says, being a warrior is not easy, mm. but it's best. Come on. Pretty much. So in that, you know, all these emotions you have in, yeah. it's not easy. But it's best for me to marry based on yeah. what's the, going on. The alternative. The, the yeah. outcomes. Yeah. It makes sense. It's best. Like for the woman, it's the, I don't want to, but it's best for you right. to marry because the outcomes are better. So, right. And that, that's better. really that generational mindset. I think that's really what it takes, right? right? Especially when it comes, you mentioned wealth of the mind, right? Like yeah. we're not making all that money just for us. Right? Like it's cool if we get to live a good life, but ultimately we want to create the best life possible for the generations coming after us, right? Not just one. We want to think three, five, seven generations ahead right. where we kind of like, what is your family's 100-year plan, right? And if you with a woman, you can't even be around for 100 days. You can't build for 100 days. <laughs> you have to look backwards. You have to look backwards. It's like, we don't need back to this support. So as we come to a close, brother, oh, sure. I really want to know for our listening audience, let's say I'm a parent. I have a kid who I assume to be a black nerd. He self-identifies, he, Good. she, as a black nerd. How do we get involved? Well, the best thing you can do is just take what I'm about to take, tell you 
and kind of doing it for yourself and then connect with us a little later. If I have a seventh grade kid, he needs to take the SAT and the ACT. I'm just, just throwing it in there. Yeah. What that's going to do for you, mama and daddy, is going to allow you to see the level of comprehension that your kid has. Mm-hmm. And it's not personal anymore. It's standing up. You're looking at it. You need to work on your writing. You need to work on your math. You need to work on this. And what that does to the kid is start getting his anxiety out the way from the mm. standardized testing early. Preparing him. The, the, SAT, the SAT allows you to take the, they allow you to take the SAT 12 times. Wow. So if you took the SAT each semester from seventh grade, you have more than enough time, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So you do that with the ACT as well. Right. So that's what you do. So because that and then you can't the kid can't play a sport, he can't do nothing if he has less than a three point. Wow. Because in anything in life, in scholarships, 3.0s. Right. right. Minimum. So what you have done, you just set your baby up. It's so natural. Right. So by the time junior year comes, when he gets the scores, right, he's at the 25 and the butter on ACT or yeah. 1,200 on ACT. Yeah. And go from there. Another thing is exposure. Mm. Let them go. If you're local, go to UC Davis. Go to UC Berkeley. Go to the campus. Go to Stanford University. Right. Uh, if you got peoples in the South, y'all go take a visit down to the South and go see the HBCUs so he can see the, the see, see the exposure part of it. So, and of course, you can reset the Blurred Academy, but other than that, I'm giving you all the game I'm going to give you. And right. in, the, in the meantime, also, take some of these junior college classes so we can cut some of the costs off the, off the kid. So, wow. those are the information I would give people. Man, uh, those are some nuggets. Yeah, and that's for the Blurred Academy. So what about Blurredify, right? And also, is there mm-hmm. is there an age range? Is it like 18 and up? Is yeah, it's 18 like and up. 14, okay. It's 18 okay. and up, but it's a private account, so you have to be invited. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't oh. be invited. Yeah, so with... <laughs> yeah, you just can't just... Yeah, you can't just pop up like, pop uh, up like yeah. <laughs> the, the other on. sites. <laughs> just so drop I invite in. you, yeah. I can invite you today, and then you got to invite him. You got to... We're doing it the way we both marry, so I know the same. Yeah, no, I, 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 I got you. you know, what I mean? but you can you can say, "Hey, I got this particular thing yeah. to your single friends." Oh yeah. wow! And they can go from there. Invite only. I like yeah. that. It's exclusive. Yeah, we're taking the culture to a new level. Yes, sir. Shout out to the Bird Academy. So that being said, is there anything else you would like to leave our wonderful guests and listening audience with? Um, I think that Black empowerment is a is, is it's very important when you just support your own life. Whatever you can purchase something, whatever you can support, whatever you can do, uh, that's that's very, very, very important for black people. So support local mm. blackness. Mm. Outstanding. So before we wrap it all the way up, um got one more question for mm-hmm. you. Uh oh. If you can take the knowledge that you have now that you've learned over the years and give it to your your 18 year old self coming straight out of high school, what would be the top three things you would tell them to do? Oh, wow. The number one thing I would tell them is, is don't lose focus on God. Yeah. That's number one. Number one. How do. And I, I want to add on to this. Yeah. For a kid that doesn't have a relationship with God, how do they find that relationship? The way I tell it is get you a spiritual code of conduct. Ooh. Whatever that conduct could be different than mine. I'm a Christian, so uh-huh. you might be Muslim, you might be Buddhist, whatever. But mm-hmm. you got to find your one. Because in that, in your spiritual code of conduct, it's your purpose. Okay. You ain't got purpose play, it's all bad for you. Mm. It is what it is. And you only can find that through your spiritual walk. And so that's number one. Number two is once you get your spiritual code of conduct, you're going to get your purpose. And then you cultivate everything in life around that purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And number three, have some fun. Man, come on. Go to the study abroad program. Get out the country. See the world. Go see the world. Go enjoy yourself. Laugh. Go to the football games. Get you some cruise. Do what you got to do. In that situation, so those three things I would do off the top of my it's more, but of go on top of the things, of course, that's, that's a really good so, start. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't, if you don't have your purpose, it's, it's, a, it's a long road for you. 
Yeah. And it, it's funny because these days you see a lot of people just wandering around without purpose. That's not and they can, yeah, they continue to have to learn those lessons over and over. Right. Just wandering around trying yeah. to figure it out, but they don't take the time to learn mm -hmm. the things that they need from within. Correct. You know what I'm saying? That relationship that you say with God is, is a huge thing, but we're not taught that. Right. Well, we are, we just don't listen to these things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's a grandma still there. They yeah. still take you need to go to church. Yeah. They're still there. I'm not, but I'm, but I don't put mine on everybody. I say you got to find it on your own. Yeah. And once you find that, life gets easier. So those are my time. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Man, but that that was an incredible conversation. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think, I think I'm I'm all part two. I got y'all from PJ all the way to Michael Lewis, all the way down to the boys. I'm super, you know, they know I'm biased about the boys, but the girls, I'm glad y'all graduating. We got 22 black clerks graduating wow. this year, going into medical schools, going into law school. I'm so excited about what you guys gonna do. Oh, for black America. By the way, are y'all only located in the Bay or is it a nationwide? Like, it's I know you're saying kids nationwide. nationwide. Yeah. It's a nationwide program. We get banned yeah. everybody. Wow. Yeah. So, so beautiful. That's, that's that on that. Super yeah. excited about that. We're going to do a big gala next year. We're going to all black party. And we're going to, you know, we're going to get so y'all going to turn, turn it up. up. <laughs> turn it up. And to celebrate and celebrate and celebrate and celebrate. Yeah, we might have to go live from uh, live from the Blurred Academy. Oh, yeah. Black yeah. Gala. Come on, you guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. We're going to do it. We're going to, I'm excited for the world. So, man. one more time for, for all our listening viewers where they can find you, whether it's social media, website, all the, the outlets. Okay, uh, we're Blurred Five. I mean, we're Blurred Five. I'm sorry. The Blurred Academy uh, on all platforms, uh, on social media, uh, personal, get in contact you right away. And so www.theblurredacademy.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Blurredify on Instagram. Blurredify, I mean, not Blurredify, but Blurred Academy on Instagram and Twitter. That's it. Yeah. You ready to close this out today, brother? Oh, yeah, absolutely. For the absolutely. So if you love this episode, tune in every single thursday at noon pacific standard time at ach.show on instagram we go live from the studio you can also catch us on kgpc 969org that's kgpc 969org if you want to listen to the broadcast and you're not in our local bay area that being said thank you all so much for joining us and stay tuned for next week's episode Peace. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Did we do it? <laughs> we did it. Come on, man. We did it. We did it. Ooh, I feel like it was definitely we could get a part two. We need a drop before we get out of here, too. The drop. Stay tuned, y'all. So drop real quick. Just uh stating your name. Uh the, the episode we're just talking about the academy and just tell them to tune in okay so i say hey this is just okay. first and last name yeah. ceo of okay. uh yep blurred academy okay you ready thanks for tuning in y'all yeah Hold Stay on, tuned. Next week. tell us when we ready to do the drop felicia uh we had about 20 in total that's cool. uh, between both and that's not including cats yeah